One of the most prolific model creators, Manuel Romeo, has created a new model called Falcoder. Falcoder is Falcoder 7 billion model fine-tuned on Code Alpaca 20,000 instruction dataset using QLoRa and PEFT. This is a model that has been released with Apache 2.0 li license, which means you can use it for commercial purpose. This is a really good model for coding purposes from what I have tested. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to load this model on a free version of Google Colab and then run your instructions. Before even we begin with, I actually ran the model and um, I got the code, like I asked a model to create a code, write a Python code to build a matplotlib bar chart. It gave me the code. I in fact went and ran the code and it actually gave me a bar chart, which means it produces usable Python code or like any programming language, Python is something that I understand using Falcoder. This Google Colab notebook that we're going to see in this video is something that Manuel Romeo has kindly provided me, which is using a PIFT library. Before we move further, I would like to quickly show you the model details in itself. This model does really well a lot of things. One of the thing is because one, the base model Falcon 7 billion parameter model is something that a lot of people love in the open source community. But now that has been fine tuned on the code Alpaca dataset, code Alpaca 20,000 instruction dataset. So it does pretty well on a um, on lot of coding related tasks. Now, if you want to use this, if you want to credit the author, this is how you cite them. And uh, if you want to use this model, technically you need at least a really good memory that is not the free Google Colab notebook memory. So the free Google Colab notebook memory has got 16 gigs, approximately 15 gigs of memory, in which we have already seen on a different video that we can run the 7 billion Falcon 7 billion instruct model. But unfortunately, this model directly will not fit in there. So what we are going to do here is we are going to use this model, load it in 8-bit, and also instead of just loading the new model, entire model, we're going to load the base model and apply the LoRa adapter on top of it. And uh, if you have enough memory, let's say more than 16 GB memory, I would strongly suggest you to use this code. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But if you are like me who loves using free Google Colab notebook, then the rest of the tutorial is for you. Manuel Romeo has very kindly shared the adapter details here. So if you go here, this which I'll link it in the YouTube description. So you can see the LoRa components here, which means you can load the base model just apply the adapter on top of it and then you would be able to run this model on the free version of Google Colab while it's being loaded on 8-bit. So now getting into the Google Colab notebook, which I'll link it in the YouTube description so you don't have to take notes. Make sure that it is on GPU. So this is currently on GPU. Go to runtime and click runtime, change runtime and then see it's on GPU. So if you have got Colab Pro, you can use different ones, but this is free version. That's thing. Next, you're going to install the required libraries, transformers, accelerate, and PIFT, and datasets, bits and bytes, and ANOPS. ANOPS is a dependency for Falcon, so we're installing ANOPS. Once you have installed all the required libraries, now load all the libraries, loading torch, PIFT, and transformers. And once you load all the libraries, now you're going to specify the model ID. If you look at this, we are specifying the adapter ID, not the complete model. So this Falcoder 7 billion is the complete model where you can go see the model in itself like 10 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes. But what we are going to point it to is the adapter details. So here, the one that you are seeing here. That is what we are giving us PIFT model ID. And from that PIFT model ID, the configuration is being retrieved and then the model is being downloaded. For the model to be downloaded, you can see config.base model path. So if you go here from that config, the base model path is being loaded. So this is a Falcon 7 billion sharded BF, Bfloat 16 version model that has been downloaded here. And then the tokenizer is extracted from the PIFT model ID. So these are downloaded. While the model is downloaded, one thing that you need to keep in mind is it is loaded in 8-bit to fit in Google Colab memory. So this is an 8-bit quantization happening thanks to Bits and Bytes, the library that we installed. Thanks to Bits and Bytes, we're loading the 8-bit model 
using Google Colab, like the free version of Google Colab. So to fit that model inside this, we are using load in 8-bit. And also you need to enable trust remote code is equal to true to make sure that this um, like transformers let you use this code because there are certain unmerged part of the model available. So anyways, so now at this point, we have got the model ID set configuration model tokenizer, everything done, which is like the base model plus the LoRa adapter. After this is downloaded, then uh, it took about three minutes for me. After this is downloaded, now we are going to load the model. This is slightly different from how we typically load our transformers model. So pift model dot from pre-train to the model, comma model pift model ID. Once you load that, you get to see the details here. What model is this? What kind of uh, architecture it has got? What are the layers it has got? You can see the entire detail here. What is the lower embedding here? So after you have loaded that, now you need to create a utility function. This is an instruct following model. I mean, of course, this has been instruct fine tuned as you have seen. So this is an instruct following model, which means you need to give the input in a certain format, get the output in a certain format, while there are certain hyper parameters given. So it takes the instruction as an input. It tells how much tokens you need to generate the temperature value, the top P, top K, and the number of beams. Even if you do not play with these things, it's very important to know that the temperature controls, let's say the creativity slash hallucination slash precision part. So the higher the temperature is, higher the randomness is, lesser the temperature is, higher the precision, but also at the same time, lesser the randomness, which means lesser the creativity. So because we are using it for coding task, we don't need higher temperature. That's why the temperature by default is set as a lower temperature. Next, you're going to get the instruction from the user and add this notation at the end, just to tell the model that you have to produce the solution. And once that is done, then it, you just typical transformer stuff. You have got the tokenizer that's, that's creating the tokens. And from that, you're going to move it to CUDA. And from there, you're going to get everything generated. And finally, you're going to decode the output and then to return the output in itself. It's pretty straightforward. You can, if you want, you can also use um, different ways to do this thing. But all it is doing is taking the text, tokenizing it, and then sending it to the model, getting it back, decoding it, and finally displaying it. That's the solution split part. Now, given that the utility function called generate is created, all we have to do is go give an instruction, design a class for representing a person in Python. So it says, okay, it's going to design a class. It's, it's, it's not a classroom. It's like the object oriented class, design a class representing a person in Python. So as you know, that it is assumed that a person would have these attributes, name, age, gender. So it says defined a class name, age, gender, and then it is giving all the details. Some of the code is not, uh, not it's, it's, a, you know, you can see and then make sense out of it. How well the code is doing, not only does Python, but it also does, uh, like more programming languages, but also you can try it with this. For example, in this case, we have said, write a script to upload files to an S3 bucket. The instruction is given and we have said how much is the output token that we want 256,000 tokens and it is giving us the solution. So it's using some Boto3 library. I'm not aware of it. I'm not sure if the code is actually good, but as you can see, it is producing an output. So to make it easier, Manuel Romeo has also given us an infinite loop where we can go use the like the typical Python input field, which is something that people still uh, use a lot. And you can enter the instruction and then wait for it to give you an output. That's exactly what I've done here. And every time you get an instruction, you send it to the generate instruction, um, generate function, which will actually call the instruction, get everything and done. So I just went ahead and then said, write a Python code to build a matplotlib bar chart. And then just, it just worked completely fine. Write a Python code to build a matplotlib bar chart. So I'm going to now say, write a Python code to build a Seaborn bar chart. So I, I want a Seaborn bar chart instead of just a matplotlib. As you can see, when I ran this thing, it takes a couple of seconds to run it. One, because we have got the memory limitation. And even if this model, like once you see the output on screen, if it is not like the most perfect, there are two things that you can immediately blame. 
one is uh, sorry there is one thing that you can immediately blame that is loading the model in 8 bit always reduces the precision a little bit but it should not be like way off but you get it right we are not loading the complete model and then doing everything so we have asked for a, a python code to build a cbon bar chart if you are not familiar with cbon cbon is um, another library python library that helps you build charts visualizations it's built on top of matplotlib Okay, let me copy the code, go back to my Jupyter Lite notebook and paste it here. Let me run this. It has also assumed the data in itself. Okay, that's my bad. I think I, I pasted it. My bad. Sorry. AI. Yeah, um, okay, Seaborn is not available. The Jupyter Lite environment. Oh my goodness. Pip install Seaborn. Um, do they? Okay, they don't let me install Seaborn. So most likely this should be the fine code. Um, I'm I'm on a Jupyter Lite environment, so that's why it's not working. It's not the AI. It says that I could not run the code. So we have got the data frame here. The data is passed here. The x axis, y axis, and uh, the access details are here. Most likely it should work, but uh, I should probably refrain from asking any questions using C1 because I cannot directly show you the quality of the code. Maybe let's uh, let's do something else. Write a Python code that can that uh, uses rejects to detect email id from a given input text so i'm going to give an input text and i want it to detect or recognize i should have said recognize anyways let's see if it can actually work i want to write a python code that uses regular expressions rejects rejects to detect email id from a given input text we are just testing out Python at this point because it's easier for me to actually run the code and do the demo. Like in the, my previous video, I did GPT engineer. A couple of comments actually said that I did not run the code, which is a very fair point to say when, when I'm actually doing AI coding related videos. So I wanted to put that extra effort in this video to run the code, actually execute the code and then show you if the code works. So we are expecting it to give us a Python code that can give us rejects as an output. Uh, I mean, it uses rejects and finds an email ID. Get this code, go back here, paste this code. As you can see, it's not completed, um, also because of the token details maybe. So it says detect email is a function, input. And uh, I know this is an input, this is an example email. So I can say one little coder at gmail.com. And uh, this is a great day lots of good models okay then next i need to call this function i'm just adding this extra line of code because uh, ai didn't do detect email then what did i do detect email detect email input text print of Cool. Let's run this. Oh, it's none. Oh my goodness. It didn't work. Okay. It didn't work. But the way we can test this is to see it actually did to be honest. Um, is, uh, is my email ID. It didn't work. And uh, that's probably because my email ID is it's none. Okay. So I think the problem is, uh, when it is finding the match and then returning, but if you just give email ID, it's working. That's probably because I didn't give my instruction properly. But if you have email ID, it detects. So maybe it fulfills what it is supposed to do. Let's do one final test with SQL because I also understand SQL. Write a SQL code, SQL query. Write a SQL query to get all the rows um, where the DOB is before Jan 1st, 1990. Okay. I'm not sure uh, if it can do this because in this case, as you know, the date has been given as um, like the weird human format. I'm not given date date properly. And uh, as a human, I would probably know DOB's date of birth, but I'm not sure if AI can figure out and then uh, combine this as a date. So the where clause is something that I'm expecting it to struggle with, but generally otherwise it's should be a simple SQL query where it has got select star and um, and um, yeah, select star from blah, 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 table. I, I also didn't give a table name here. That's also probably one of the mistakes that I must have done here. But otherwise, everything else should be in the where clause. 
let's see what output it gives you while it is generating i would like to quickly quickly give you an overview of this video first we checked the gpu availability gpu is there free google collab we have got the full model and we have got the adapter the lora details which we can use it on the base model once you have uh, checked whether you have gpu uh, uh, install all the python libraries load all the required python libraries and uh, download the model tokenizer with the configuration from the pif model now load the pif model in itself and uh, create the utility function that can actually take an instruction and generate and give you the output and then start playing around with this model that's what we have done here okay it has given a select star it's done a good job like in fact um, as you know um, like i said it needs to assume dob means date and it needs to translate this into a date format which is not an easy task usually um, in the past like i've struggled to deal this with uh, libraries like spacey regex in fact there is a library called numerify there were like there were a lot of libraries before all these llms there were a lot of libraries in the classical nlb world where we used to use just to translate this into something like this but very very happy to see that llm has successfully done select star from table where uh, dob is lesser than this is same yeah this is before lesser than this and this is uh, after this cool so from my testing i'm honestly uh, quite happier with this model especially even when it is a an 8 bit model it works super fine but the reason i made this video is for you all to try it out and then let me know in the past few days we have seen a lot of ai coding models starting from star coder to wizard coder and now we have got a fal coder or falcon coder so check out falcon coder or fal coder which comes with apache 2.20 license which means if you want to build a chrome extension if you want to build a visual studio code extension or if you want to use this for commercial purpose you get to use it so let's see how how like i would like to hear from you what do you feel about this thing if you have any questions let me know in the comment section otherwise all the links including the collab notebook will be in the youtube description should work completely fine as you have seen in the video happy prompting take care also thanks to manu romeo for giving me all the information